Okay, we are doing an overview of the Bible in a year, trying to get the whole thing in to try to get the big picture. And we are now in what's called the poetry books, and there's five of them. There's the book of Job, there's the book of Psalms, there's the book of Proverbs, there's the book of Ecclesiastes, there's the book of the Song of Solomon. So we are now in the Psalms, but let's recount where we've come from. We started, we went through the what was called the book of the law. There were five books in the beginning. Uh, there's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So those were known as the law. They were known as the Torah. They were known as the law of Moses, sometimes just simply referred to as Moses. If you said Moses, you would think that it was talking about those books. So after that, we got into the history books. And the history books, there are 12 of them. And you can imagine that, well, the history books were all about the history of Israel. And it was about the history of Israel after they came out of Egypt. And you got into um, the book of Joshua, where Joshua brings them into the land, divides the tribes up, and they each have their territory. Then you have the book of Judges, where those tribes that were divided up in their territory for 400 years, they went through these cycles of doing good and serving God and getting in trouble and needing to be delivered. And this went on and on and on, and the cycles went over. And so then we, in the history books, we entered another phase where it really became the phase where the history books, uh, because they were ruled just by a king, the king being God. So the history books start to turn and they want to have a king and they get a king. And so you have first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, um, you have first and second Chronicles. So, uh, in those history books, you get the history of the kings. Now, the problem is when we get to these poetry books, the poetry belongs further back in the story of the kings. But we're in the Psalms now. And we said that the Psalms were divided into five books. If it's not complicated enough already. The book of Psalms, 150 Psalms, divided into five books. And it's not divided necessarily evenly, where you would think, you know, well, there's 150, it's divided into five, maybe, you know, 30 uh, psalms apiece. No, it doesn't quite work that way. And we said that those five books that they're divided into seem to be connected, seem to identify, seem to parallel the first five books of the Bible. So what we said was the first book where it's called Book 1 in the Psalms, that's what it's called, Book 1, and it goes from Psalm 1 to Psalm 41. At the end of Psalm 41, it says, Amen and Amen, and that's the end of that particular book, and it moves to Book 2. But in Book 1, those 41 Psalms, they're written mostly by King David. And King David, he was a shepherd. He liked it outside. He loved the creation. He would look at the stars, you know, as a shepherd boy, and he writes a lot of these psalms about creation, the created order, God and his goodness and his order and the order of creation. And so um, we read a psalm like that out of, uh, out of the first book. So it's about humans, it's about people, and it's about the creation. And it seems as though that first book of psalms correlates, parallels the book of Genesis. Book number two, Psalms 42 through 72, they're written mostly by David and some of the other sons of Korah. And the, but the themes change a little bit. The themes change to be um, rescue, God rescuing us, uh, God uh, bringing us out, God protecting us, God redeeming us. And that seems to apply to the second book of the Torah, the second book of the law, Exodus. So the first one applies to Genesis. The second one applies to Exodus. And it does seem those are the themes of the Psalms, for the most part. And then you get into the third book of the Psalms. Uh, and this is written mostly by Asaph, a worship leader in Israel. And we went through one of his Psalms and looked at the Psalm that he wrote. And this, we say, parallels mostly the book of Leviticus. Well, what does the book of Leviticus talk about? In its theme, well, it's all about the worship of God. It's all about the priesthood. It's all about, you know, how we respond to God, you know, with these sacrifices and all the sacrifices that we're making. In those particular Psalms, uh, and the sacrifices are made where? They're made at the tabernacle, and the tabernacle later becomes the temple. The tabernacle was temporary. Uh, the temple is permanent. 
And so those particular psalms tend to revolve around those concepts of worship. So now we're into books four and five. We're going to do this together. And books four starts with about, Psalm, not about, starts with Psalm 90, and it goes all the way to Psalm 106. Now, who were the writers of these psalms? Well, a lot of them don't have any names at all. They're just sort of collected psalms. Somebody collected them and put them there for us. This is the Songbook of Israel, and we don't really know exactly who they are. And if we were to say that it corresponds to or parallels the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, we would say, well, it would be Numbers. Okay, so what's the theme of Numbers? Well, the theme of Numbers is them traveling from Mount Sinai after they had been delivered out of Egypt to the Promised Land, an 11-day journey. And the 11-day journey takes them 40 years. And so these particular Psalms, you'll particularly like these if you're going through a difficult time in your life or if you're going through a wandering time in your life or a time where you're unsettled and you're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Well, you'll find that these Psalms, Psalms 90 through 106, will identify with your condition, will identify with your emotions because it identifies with the book of Numbers and it identifies with this whole idea of, you know, being in a desert and where's God and, and what is God doing and, and what is he like and how, how is he leading us this way and why is he leading us this way? Well, those are those kinds of Psalms. And you find that God did, in fact, lead people the way that he led them in the book of Numbers. And uh, there you have the parallel. So now we also get to the last book of Psalms. 150 Psalms divided into five books. This last one goes from Psalm 107 to 150. And uh, who wrote this? Who, who wrote these ones? Well, um, Again, a lot of them have no attribution. We don't really know who wrote them. Somebody collected them. They were the um, collected songs of Israel, the familiar songs of Israel. But a lot of them are David as well. So you get back to David again. And in Deuteronomy, uh, that's the second law. It's, it's really what we, we learned uh, in the book of Exodus with the law, you know, Exodus chapter uh 20, when they, they get the commandments and the things going forward. And so what's going to happen here um, is a lot of these Psalms are going to be parallel to the book of Deuteronomy, and they're going to deal with God's word, right? What his word said. In fact, uh, one of them, Psalm 119, the lengthiest Psalm, lengthiest book in the Bible, lengthiest chapter in the Bible, all about God's word. Well, Deuteronomy is all about God's word. It's the second time that we hear God's word. And then there'll be songs of praise, songs of praise and songs of adoration. You'll also find when you get to uh, Psalm 120 that you get into this whole series of psalms called the, the songs of ascent. Well, what does that mean, the songs of ascent? Well, they think it means two things, depending on you know who you're listening to, or maybe it means both. But Jerusalem, in order to get to Jerusalem, it's up on a hill, so you're always going up. So when you're going up to Jerusalem, you sing the songs of ascent. We're ascending to Jerusalem and singing these songs of praise to God who is there. Other people say, well, yes and no. Uh, there were the 15 steps, you know, on, that you would go up to to get into, into the temple, the particular steps there. And they say that the Psalms of Ascent are what the priests, when they were going into the temple, up those steps, that the, the songs of Ascent are the songs that they would sing going up those steps. Well, either way, they're songs of Ascent, going up to the temple and singing these praises to God. So there you have the book of Psalms, you know, put together for us, the five books. We looked at the different categories, there's different kinds of Psalms, there's, there's hymns, there's Psalms that are penitent, there's psalms that are praise, there's uh, psalms that are, you know, calling out to God. There's lots of different categories, but those are the psalms. And so we will continue in the poetry books with the next book. Then if this one is largely King David, the next book, the next poetry book is going to be by his son, Solomon. So kind of interesting. Now, the poetry books are mostly David and his son, Solomon. So hopefully that helps us understand the Psalms a little bit and where they belong, but they belong peppered into the history books that we looked at, uh, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, peppered in that period. So although it comes after, chronologically in a paper Bible, it comes after that, 
it really belongs previous in those other ones. Hope that's not too confusing and uh, we'll understand it more by and by. And by the time we get to the end, we'll be able to put the whole Bible together. Hey, bless you guys. Love you. Let's keep trekking along 230 miles an hour, going pretty fast, but we're getting it. Hey, bless you.